Hello, welcome. Today we are going to explore three stories from the wonderful world of Taoism, the ancient Chinese philosophy most associated with the yin yang. And the Taoists, they were philosophers and thinkers, and they came up with really powerful ideas to help us understand ourselves, our place in the universe, and how we could live in harmony, both with ourselves, with other human beings, and nature. And today we're going to explore three stories from this wonderful person called Zhongzi. He has really funny and silly stories to help break us out of taking ourselves too seriously and some of the judgments that may give us pain. And in particular, we're going to explore some ideas around this question and this feeling that our value is outside of ourselves. Do you ever have the thoughts, I'll be happy when? I'll be, you know, when I get this job, I'll be happy or I'll be good enough when? I have the six pack or the Instagram booty. I'll be beautiful when. What, what are these things for you? If you just take some time, have you been having thoughts that are giving you pain at the moment where you're externalizing your value? You have these if statements. If I get this, then I'll be content. So obviously some of these thoughts are helpful. Like you know, if I have a job, then I can have a roof over my head. That's important. Uh, and you know we live in complex economic systems so you know we need jobs etc however a lot of these ifs are really not capturing the true wonder of who you are like is it really true that you become more valuable as a human being if you have the nice um yeah, louis vuitton handbag or having a seven figure salary like does that really make you a more worthy human being well the Taoist certainly didn't think so and so they came up with lots of fun stories to help us yeah, let go of this pain and these judgments and yeah, feeling like we're not good enough. So let's do our first story. And these are gourds or pumpkins. And so this is a story about yeah, the word useful and useless and whether or not they actually mean anything or are constructs. Let's see what you think about this story and then we'll continue. So Huizhe was a friend of Zhongzi. So Zhongzi is the, the writer of these stories. And Huizhe said, Zhongzi, the king of Wei gave me these seeds for giant gourds and I planted them in the ground and lo and behold, they created these humongous, ginormous things. However, they were so big that I couldn't use them as a watering container like I normally would do. It fitted 200 liters. I couldn't even carry the thing. So I split it in half and tried to use it as a ladle as you would do, but it was so big and unwieldy, I couldn't dip it into anything. Obviously they were fabulously big, but they were so big as to be useless. So there was nothing left for it. I smashed them all to pieces. Now Zhongzi watching this, said, Huizhe, my friend, you really are thick when it comes to using big things. Why were you worrying about whether you could hold water in it or use it as a ladle? Why didn't you consider using it as a bathtub and then go floating down the rivers and lakes, bobbing along and enjoying yourself? You clearly have overgrown scrub in your head. So that's our first story. Jongs is a bit harsh to his friend. You clearly have overgrown scrub in your head. What was that story? What was your experience of that story? What did you think or feel? Just take a moment to, yeah, what, what, what was that story telling you? And then we can explore perhaps some ideas of what Jongs was talking about. So we had these great big gourd seeds and in ancient China, gourds were used as water containers and ladles. These are the conventional uses of a gourd. However, this one was so big that you couldn't do either of those things. And so Huizhe, the friend of Zhongzi, decided that these gourds were useless. Now, the key thing to note is that judgments like something being useful or useless require a goal, a purpose, in order to be defined as useful or useless. So, the, the sort of purpose of a gourd back then in ancient China was either water containers or ladles. And so when this big fabulous one fell out of uh, that little box, Huizhe considered it as useless. But is it really useless? Because actually 
yeah, as Jongs has said, you can use it in many different ways. You can use it as a bathtub and go floating down the rivers and lakes. Now, I thought this was just Jongs uh, making things up and being silly, but I did some research and that actually turns out that pumpkins and gourds are some of the biggest vegetables in nature. They can grow up to 1,200 kilograms and people do actually use them as boats and little kayaks and go floating around in them. So Jongsa wasn't actually just making this up. This is a perfectly legitimate use of a gourd. And this applies obviously to more than just pumpkins. This story is challenging us to think about ideas like useful and useless. Because is it that if sometimes you feel like I'm useless at this or why am I not good enough? I'm not valuable enough. Is it that you are kind of feeling pain because you are trying to fit into other people's boxes and purposes and definitions. You know, like society gives us, you know, be an engineer, be a doctor, uh, you know, the boxes continue. And if you don't step in it, then, you know, you find like, I might, is there something wrong with me? Rather than realizing that, you know, we're all unique and we all have our own things that work for us and, and things that come easier to us. Uh, and so, you know, we all have gifts to give the world. And so do other people's judgments need to give you pain? Zhongzi thinks maybe not. So we can bring this story to mind, these massive gourds that, you know, they didn't fit into the normal categories of what useful was back in ancient China, but of course they were valuable and wonderful. And that is true of all of us. So let's continue on to our next story. And so this story is about how judgments can be arbitrary and maybe based on not much information. And so to be a bit cautious about the sort of judgments that we can make. So again, I'll say it and then see what you think uh, and then let's get deeper into it. So a zookeeper was feeding acorns to a troop of monkeys and he said, right, listen up everyone. You're getting three acorns in the morning and four in the evening. And the monkeys hearing this were outraged. They shrieked and howled with rage and cried, injustice. The zookeeper seeing this said, all right, all right, don't get your tails in a twist. How about I'll give you four acorns in the morning and three in the evening. And the monkeys hearing this were overjoyed. They danced, they leaped, said yippee, and danced for the rest of the day. So what are your thoughts on that story? What, what do you think Zhongzi is trying to say there? So these stories are taken from a book called The Zhongzi and it's been passed down the generations because these stories are so fun and he, ha he writes the teaching parables like that little bit we just heard and then he gives his explanation. So he says, this is typical. The reality of the words aren't any different. The monkeys, at the end of the day, they got seven acorns. And yet one set of words engendered rage and outcry. And then another set of words engendered joy. This is typical. The sage, however, can see differences and yet sit in heavenly balance between the two. The sage sits in heavenly balance between the two. So it's easy to get caught along like the monkeys do in you know, the, the little things that happen in our day and we get really annoyed at other people. Say, for example, you know, you didn't sleep very well and then suddenly everyone's pissing you off and you're getting angry at everyone. Now, is it the external world or is it you? Now, if we don't have self-awareness, then we, we can externalize our anger and, and blame other people. And maybe they are being annoying, but maybe with a bit of reflection, uh, we can find that actually I just didn't sleep very well last night. And so that is the sort of the, the skill that we can develop. And as Zhongzi says, being like sages, we can see these differences. We can see these maybe more challenging judgments pop into our head. Uh, but we can sit in heavenly balance between the two and just kind of observe and, and respond. And this is pointing to the basics of mindfulness. The idea that when you have a thought pop up, you don't necessarily need to do anything with it. You don't need to latch it on to the story of who you are, like I'm a messed up person or I'm not good enough. Like you, those thoughts, we can't control what comes into our heads, but we can choose whether or not to latch them on, allow them to stick onto the story of who we think we are. So this idea of responsibility, the ability to choose our responses. You can have a thought pop up, you have the internal space to watch it, and you develop that space through meditation. It's like doing a bicep curl 
in the gym, you strengthen your mind's ability to just stay present and, and, and use the light of your consciousness to then choose your response and choose what serves you. Because yeah, the emotions, they can be helpful and, and guide us in life, but also sometimes uh, they can make erroneous connections and they are, are trying to understand the world with limited information. And so, yeah, again, we can bring this story to mind of these monkeys being a bit silly and we can be a bit silly sometimes. And so to give ourselves a break with that and, and that's OK. And yeah, just to not take ourselves or our thoughts too seriously. So, again, one of the key ideas with this is that we only have limited cognition and we're trying to understand all of this, right? Our brains are only yay big. The world is infinite. And so obviously our brain is going to make mistakes and it's going to make shortcuts and miss out key information. And so this is what these monkeys were doing, focusing on one factor without seeing the bigger picture. And when we have these mindfulness practices, it develops our ability to step back, to take in more perspectives and see a bigger picture and hopefully live and act with more wisdom. So hopefully we're beginning to let go of some of the pain and the baggage that we have in our lives. Ideas of being useful or useless, we just think, okay, well, let's connect back to who I am beneath other people's judgments or maybe our own judgments that are based on other people's values rather than our own. And then we have this kind of humility of understanding that a lot of the judgments that we have in our minds are based on limited information. And so maybe we don't have to take every single thought seriously. And then we can also have practices like meditation, which help us let go of thoughts without having been caught by them. And then they take us down perilous routes. Here's one more story from Zhongzi. And this is about trying to connect with that uniqueness, your gifts, and realizing that you are valuable for just being here. So the King of Lu was on a walk one day in the forest when suddenly a shadow goes over the sun and he looks up and he sees a great big red bird, a seabird. Now the Kingdom of Lu is deep within China. So for a seabird to make it all the way inland is a great honor. And so the king called up to the bird and said, great bird, tis a great honor that you have come all the way to my lands. I wish to invite you to a feast. And the bird being a polite bird, said, all right, I'll come to your party. So the king put on a great feast at the ancestral temple. Now back in ancient China, the ancestors were really important and they're still important today. And so to have a great honor of this bird arriving while the king was in power, he wanted to show off to all the ancestors. So he put on a fantastic banquet. He didn't spare a single expense. He got the finest food. He got a group of musicians playing nine tone flute music. Everyone was having a great time, except from one being the bird he just sat there dazed and confused. He didn't eat a single morsel nor drink a single sip. Three days later, the bird passed away. Now Zhongzi, seeing this, said the king in his arrogance tried to nourish the bird with what would nourish the king rather than what would nourish the bird. If you were to give the bird what would nourish it, you would set it free You'd allow it to roam deep in the forest where it could snuffle around for worms. You could let it float on the rivers and lakes, bobbing around, enjoying itself, maybe flying freely with the flock. It would be how it wanted to be. On a normal day, birds don't like the sound of human voices, let alone nine-tone flute playing and all the hubbub of a party. If you were to get those musicians and put them in the local lake, you'd find that the birds would fly for the skies, the fish would swim to the bottom of the lake, and the animals would run for the hills. Only the humans would come and listen. Being fundamentally different in nature, they like and dislike different things. They have different preferences and capabilities. And so the sage, knowing this, celebrates all things for who they are and allows all things to be as they are. So beautiful story. So many amazing details in that. And yeah, if you want to read more, I've got the books linked down in the description. And yeah, the kind of key point from this, right living is subjective and specific to your nature. Like there's differences between birds and humans and all of us human beings, we're, we're truly unique. There's no one 
that will ever be like you, despite the billions and billions of human beings. Nobody has your story, your upbringing, uh, and your voice, your fingerprints, your preferences. You find things easier that you know come out of your genetics and, and your upbringing and also your free will and your choice. And so celebrating that and realizing that you have gifts, you have things that are uh, easier for you uh, and, and harder. And, and there's a really beautiful phrase that Zhongzi uses, which is that you are heaven in action. Like if we take time to be present, and, the, and this is another wonderful uh, benefit you get from doing mindfulness practice is that when you're quiet and you contemplate about who you really are you find that you are one manifestation of the intelligence of the universe a walking talking thinking breathing dancing laughing miracle of nature and as Zhongzi puts it you are heaven in action heaven in action so to celebrate that and, and to realize that if there were not a place for you here you would not have been brought into being in the first place. You know, the laws of nature came together and you know, the, the egg and the sperm, your conception, and then your unique consciousness came into being. Wow, here you are. And another quite beautiful thing to contemplate is the fact that you are always held up by the earth. You know, if there wasn't a place for you, maybe you would just fall down into the center of the earth and, and weren't held. But if you, you know, pay attention to, if you're sitting somewhere, your bum, and your feet, your connection, maybe you're in that, your house. And just, if we imagine now, you can maybe close your eyes, putting your awareness and down onto your feet and then your house, the foundations that are holding everything up. Beneath that is the earth. And so wherever you go and whatever headspace you're in, the earth is always holding you up. And we can get really deep with this and something for you to contemplate in your own meditation and, and, and reflection is that who you are implies the earth. You can't have you without the earth holding you up. You can't have a figure on a stage without the stage to stand upon. And so, yeah, you're heaven in action and inseparable from everything else, which is wonderful and beautiful and yeah, cherishing your uniqueness is yeah, something you can open your eyes to consider in your own time. And we can yeah, get, get that richness from stories which help us understand that yeah, all the different animals on this planet are also part of this wonderful world that we share and they all have their own uniqueness, uh, which is yeah, quite wonderful. So there's some wonderful stories from a wonderful Zhongzi. I hope you got something out of them. And so, yeah, so this letting go of judgment and these thoughts, not taking ourselves too seriously, having fun. These stories are silly. You know, we had talking angry and joyful monkeys. We had giant gourds. We had flying red birds, you know, really beautiful imagery uh, and all of it to help with our mental health and how we talk uh, with ourselves and our, the, the health of us as a total being, our mind, body and spirit. Uh, and so, yeah, inspiring stuff from ancient China. This is 2,300 2, years old. How to let go of judgment and live joyfully. So judgments are subjective, arbitrary, and cannot capture you. You, you wonderful uniqueness. And so you're valuable for just being here. Cherish that. And another great quote from Zhongzi. Don't throw away what is already yours and run after something that is not. So, you know, if you want the Chanel handbag, you want the seven figure salary, you externalize your value and you run after these things, you're in a hamster wheel and you're perpetually trying to get there. Um, but it's a mirage that fades into the distance because consuming and trying to, uh, and trying to get external things to fill a, an internal void that we may feel is ultimately fruitless. We need to feel okay with who we are now and it, to accept the, the totality of who we are, warts and all, even the bits that we don't like. And that isn't a, a, a stasis where we're like, okay, this is me, I'm never gonna change. If we look to nature, growth is a part of nature. You know, a tree grows from a small acorn to a mighty tree wider than a man's embrace. And so growth is part of nature. And our, we grew from, you know, the sperm and the egg to uh, whoever you are now. But our spiritual growth and our mental growth is also now a conscious uh, journey. So it's not just done for us like our physical growth was. 
but it's up to us. And so it's these ideas that have been passed down the generations from ancient China because they work. And the fact that they're still relevant to our modern lives means that, yeah, human nature hasn't changed all, over all these thousands of years. Like humans, we think we're so important. And obviously, you know, we've become so powerful with our science and technology. For example, enabling, enabling me to talk to you from a field in Scotland. Um, you know, we've done amazing things, but our human nature hasn't really changed. And a lot of the challenges of what it means to be human hasn't really changed. And so that's why these ancient ideas can still help us. So if I could recommend one thing for you to reflect upon, and I'll get to that quickly, just one more idea is letting go, letting go. A mantra I use, let go and let Tao, let go and let Tao. Tao is this word for the universe and Taoism, just let it happen, go with the flow. And so, you know, if you have these thoughts pop up, thank them, you know, you can't control the thoughts that you have, you can't be anyone else except for, from who you are now. And so it's about creating the space within to allow these thoughts to pop up and go. You let them go, you relax into enjoying the present moment. Uh, and the natural consequence of that is a joy, a natural effortless joy, because you're not constantly beating yourself up, wasting your energy and creating unnecessary pain. So if I could uh, offer you something to think about uh, for this week and, and for life, is that if you're underminer, the voice in your head that brings you down and gives you pain, is giving you jip, awesome. It's time to practice. So those ideas of responsibility, mindfulness, maybe bringing some of the stories to mind and yeah, some ideas for you to, to go with. Meditation, can you start a meditation practice? Even just taking a few deep breaths, inhale and exhale. You know, I do that throughout the day as well as you know, having a meditation practice as well, but you don't, you know, start small. A journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. So don't make meditation this big thing that you don't have time for. Even just being present with a single breath can be really powerful because it breaks you out of those looping thought patterns that maybe give you pain. And then, yeah, returning to the breath, I talked about that, and then the body. So returning to the body, if our thoughts are giving us pain and stopping us from enjoying our lives, then getting into the body can create that space where we, it doesn't really matter if we have thoughts of not being good enough or not being worthy. We can just allow those thoughts to dissipate. And so Tai Chi is a wonderful exercise from the Chinese culture, walking in nature, laughing, watching some comedy, bringing some lightness and joy into your life. Yeah, have a think about what resonates with you. What do you enjoy doing? Uh, and what, when you're stressing yourself out, how can you use your body? Often physical exercise, like going for a run or a walk, uh, can be really good. Uh, a phrase that I love is that the heart and mind follow your feet. So the idea that if you start walking, that can transform your mind and your heart and your spirit, because they aren't separated. They are all interconnected. And so if you look holistically at your well-being, uh, your mental health, your physical health, and your spiritual health, you'll find that they all add into each other and all complement each other. So thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed those stories and yeah, something to contemplate for yourself and some offerings from Zhongzi. Thank you for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Let me know what you thought about those stories. And yeah, I hope you have a wonderful and joyful day. See you soon.